hello, hello. <laughs> Sir David the Bard. <laughs> Sir David the Bard. I'm coming to you out of uh, Kangaroo City. Uh, one of the kangaroos kicked me in the crotch. <laughs> the oxygen. <laughs> hey, crotches have to have oxygen. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the doctor said, you want oxygen? And I go, I don't know, give it to me. So anyway, I have this big machine down here and it's making oxygen. And uh, I watch TV with it. I sleep with it. And I've got my apnea machine coming. I got computers here. <laughs> I've got sensors here. <laughs> Anna, calm down. <laughs> I got the oxygen mask here. <laughs> I usually wear it like this so my ear can hear much better <laughs> and my eye can see much better. You know, it's kind of like the old pirate eye. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, let's uh, quit fooling around. <laughs> let's quit ripping Medicare off. Anyway. I found uh, Grant Palmer. I don't know Grant Palmer, and I don't read his stuff. And uh, you know me. I don't read anybody's stuff except my own. And uh, when I find something good, I try to pass it on to you about the Mormon Church. There is a YouTube here. I've got it down below. Just click on it. It's long, but it's the most comprehensive <laughs> rock interview I have ever seen in my life. The Joseph Smith Rock, defended by the Mormon Church, and Grant Palmer goes, how do you read a rock? I think it's funny as hell, and I'm going to tell you something. Watch the guy that def defends the Mormon Church. Boy, trying to change the subject, not answering the question, deflection, deflection, bang, bang, deflection, and uh, everybody's lying. <laughs> Is, there is the epitome of the Mormon Church trying to defend Joseph Smith looking at a rock in a top hat to uh, get revelation to write the Book of Mormon. If this isn't the biggest clusterfuck you ever saw in your life, then you know you've seen some things I haven't seen. So anyway, uh, I had to go on to oxygen <laughs> to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, I don't want you to worry about me. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Worry about me all the time. But anyway, um, people have asked me, uh, am I in a hospital room? And no, I'm not. This is my actual bedroom. Now, here's what I'm planning, okay? And you can tell me if it's stupid or not. I don't really care because I'm still going to do it. I'm getting to an age and a stage of life where... I don't want to fall down, break a hip, break a leg, <laughs> catch my weenie on the printer over there. I don't want to do that stuff. So I put guardrails up all around so I can go to the bathroom at night and not fall down. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a hospital room. I have my tilt bed, <laughs> my oxygen, and I'm going to have my C-cap uh, here in the next couple of weeks and uh, stop the apnea and my computer God damn it this computer from Medtronic hey when a company does good I'm gonna say Medtronic it's four thousand dollars and this <laughs> this here is one thousand and this one here is like thirty dollars a day or thirty dollars every three days and the insulin unbelievable Humalog is so expensive and I keep saying to everybody do you really want to spend this much money to keep me alive and the Mormons go no we don't want to spend a dime but my family goes yeah let him have some oxygen so anyway um, I have this really cool oxygen coming it's the backpack now this guy came in here the other day and my doctor ordered a, ga a portable gas oxygen well, they brought 12 bombs up here. God damn, the things are... I said to the guy, if those fall over and knock the nozzle off, will they launch into space? And he says, they certainly will. Well, they put 12 bottles here, and then they put this, this portable um, dolly. How am I going to load 
bombs on a dolly and take them down three flights of stairs here in Kangaroo City. My kangaroos don't do that kind of work. They don't. This is a strong union. Take your own bottle down. So I told them, get the hell out of here. Get the bottles out of here. And they came and got the bottle. So I've got the port or the uh, the home device, and it makes oxygen. It makes oxygen, and then it pushes it into the mass. Now I've got another one coming, which is the the backpack. It's a little suitcase. You've seen them. You hold under your arm, and then you have. Uh, this is the one. This. <laughs> this is the one. Look at this one. <laughs> Does this look like I'm going to pick up women? <laughs> yes, if I'm rich, I would, but I'm not rich. So anyway, this one here goes with the portable one. And, uh, you know, I need to wash that. <laughs> I don't know how it works. So the portable one has a four-hour battery and an eight-hour battery. And I can sit in the car and breathe that. So I always have the window down. It frees everybody out. So hopefully that will uh, help. And, uh, you know, my Mormon family that's watching is just cheering. He's falling apart. <laughs> no, I'm not falling apart. I just need a little help now and then. So anyway, my beautiful little Allison, she came in just now and loaded up my pump with insulin. And uh, so anyway, uh, I'm alive and well. Uh, one of my relatives the other day said to me, well, th what do you consider your health? Good, fair, poor. And I never thought I was in poor health. But maybe I am. I don't know. These things, you know, I've asked a couple of kangaroos, <laughs> and they won't talk because they're afraid I won't feed them. <laughs> so anyway, little Allison went trick-or-treating the other night. Oh, my God. She came home with a bag of candy, and she's smart now. She's 13. And she said, Dad, will you take me uh, up on the hill where the rich people are? They give out good shit. <laughs> so I did, and they did. So big old box of candy. We had to hide it away. She's got to go to the dentist tomorrow for um, <laughs> four cavities. Now, I'm going tomorrow. Ha! <laughs> this is my health good or poor. I'm going tomorrow to the hospital. And they're going to take a picture, I guess, or and or they're going to shoot me with some kind of a drug that makes my heart go really fast, and then they're going to take a picture of it. <laughs> my ex-wife say they're not going to see anything. There is no heart in there. But I think there is, and they want to check it after the quad bypass. Said, have you ever been back to the doctor? I said, hell no, the last time I went. They cut me open all the way from here to here, opened my ribs up. Worked on my heart. I don't want to go back to the hospital. No, I don't want to go back. So, anyway, uh, my doctor, he's a good man. He's a Mormon, and he laughs his ass off. He thinks I'm funny. I don't think I'm that funny, but he thinks I'm funny. And uh, I haven't been banned from his office yet, and I just wanted the fan. Uh, you know, there, there's some... Anna, look. <laughs> Ooh. And I would have married you in another lifetime. You're a bad girl, and I'm a bad boy. So that we would have made bad kids. But anyway, um, then I wanted to say to the lady that wrote me uh, that posed as another person. Um, there's a person that wrote me that said she was married to my uh, mother's. Or let's see, to to Mercy's sister in Belgium. <clears throat> now, how they got a hold of me in Belgium? I don't know. I told you I go all over the world. I'm in 220 countries, and um, I get more hits than the Mormon Church gets members to listen to their message uh, every year. I am going to live to get 2 million. I've got about 1.4, 1.5 right now. I never thought I would have a million or 2 million hits. But anyway, uh, she wrote some lies about the Mercy's sister and made a fool of herself. Uh, she's a Filipino uh, with, I think, Belgium uh, citizenship right now. And uh, she wrote me an ugly letter and pretended it was from Mercy's sister's ex-husband. It's not true. None of it's true. She's just a, a, a bleak, bleak. I like that word. It's a new one. She's a bleak uh, old lady that can't stand it that Mercy's parents got to the United States. She always wanted to look down on Mercy's parents 
and she warned me how much money these people were going to take away from me. They've never asked for a penny. Never. Mercy's never asked for a penny, and her parents have never asked for a penny. Now, Grandma's doing great here at the house and uh, enjoying herself. She goes to the store. She's always got money in the bank. You know, she's always working for people and earning money. And uh, Ty, the father that made me the magic rock, um, he now is tied into a um, uh, a gallery that hires him three days, four days a week to come in and draw pictures of people. And he said to me, I don't know how to charge him. And I said, in the United States, we call it charging him up the ass. <laughs> well, how much is that? So we're working out his price, and he's earning money now as a citizen or as a permanent resident here in the United States. So I took him driving the other day. Now let me tell you, I have sworn and sworn and sworn I would never teach another Filipino to drive. Well, I taught him. <laughs> we drove almost to Kansas because <clears throat> he doesn't want to turn left or right. He just wants to go straight. I don't. It's okay. Our roads will go straight forever. But we need to be somewhere around the city that we live in. So anyway, he went to turn, and uh, he forgot how to turn, and uh, anyway, got it. <laughs> I've said I'll never do it, and here I am doing it again. And uh, so anyway, uh, winter is coming here in Australia, and as you know, the kangaroos in the snow have a hard time jumping. And this uh, little man from the Philippines, <laughs> he'll freeze in his tracks trying to walk to the gallery. So anyway, he's got a job. He's making money. His mother or his uh, wife is making money, and uh, I'm making money. Now I have to tell you, there, there's a new thing going on with the bard, <laughs> Anna. Look at that fan. <laughs> She's so cute, <laughs> sir girl. Look at the fan. I know the fan's not strong enough, but anyway, <laughs> just imagine what you would see, because what you would see <laughs> would scare you anyway. I bought Mercy some stock. Now, we're not in the stock market. We're a middle class family, working family, and I didn't have rich parents. Uh, Donald Trump said his dad loaned him a million dollars. My dad couldn't spell million dollars. He was a printer. He worked at a newspaper, and uh, my mom was a beautician. Well, anyway, um, we decided that we were going to buy some stock. Uh, and so we went down and, and we bought this, um, uh, it's called uh, Black Rock Stock. Well, they have a bunch of mutual funds and this and that. So we bought um, hospital machines, because I'm going to use one tomorrow, and then I want to own just a little bit of it. So little, you can't even see it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we have some stock now in uh, health services and the machines that go to hospitals. Well, I was reading on the computer a couple days ago that the Chinese government has lifted their one-child ban. Now, to me, that's significant. I don't know. It just seems to me that the Chinese are going to have more kids than one. Well, that's baby food. That's car seats. That's, uh, you know, clothing. So I called my broker and I said, do you have a fund... Uh, in China. He said, we do. <laughs> he said, listen, I think those people are going to have sex. From what I've seen in my degrees, humans are going to have sex. And there's going to be more Chinese kids, so get me into some China stock. So today I bought two Chinamen. <laughs> They'll be here to put my railroad in. They'll be here to uh, fix, uh, you know, the restaurant food. So anyway, now I own a small piece of China. Now, I drove by the big windmills the other day. I'm telling you, I saw a windmill blade, one, on a truck. It was like a half a mile long. They don't look that big. They're big. They're big. And so I said to myself, because I've been in Tehachapi, California, and I've been out in uh, Wyoming, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, there's windmills all through there, and they're turning and making electricity. And I said, you know, I think that's a thing of the future. 
and uh, Jerry Brown is not going to go without water in California. I know Jerry Brown. He's going to put some salt plants along the water there in the coast, and he's going to pump the ocean <laughs> into the California vegetables and fruits. So anyway, um, I told my broker, I said, you know, I'd like to, to take a look at that, uh, that windmill farm stuff. And um, Mercy <laughs> said today, <laughs> the wind was blowing, and they're just going really slow. I think that they're, they have a governor on them. And she said, well, how fast can they go? And I go, I don't know if they can go like a fan, but if that son of a bitch comes off of there and it's going like a fan, it's going to go into Nebraska, up into New England, and out into the ocean like a torrent, and it's going to tear up everything it touches, including human heads. So anyway, uh, I'm thinking of owning a little windmill. Now, you know, I almost bought a windmill. When I was in California, um, I was putting together a ranch for... Uh, emotionally disturbed children and uh, I was going to buy a windmill and I was close. I came right down to almost buying it. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you know how good the part is doing. I'm going to lose, I know, every dime that I put into these companies, but hey, if I make it big, I'll buy a few more kangaroos. I, I don't know what I would do. I'm happy uh, with what I have. And uh, nitrous oxide, you know, my dentist, when um, I had a good dentist in California, and I had the mask <laughs> on, and he let me put my hand down on the nitrous bottle, and I could just turn it up, and I'm telling you, I've only smoked marijuana once or twice when I was, you know, in my late 20s, maybe early 30s, a half a century ago, and that was good, it was good, but that nitrous oxide, unbelievable. I went into the Celestial Kingdom and found 800 of my polygamous wives-to-be. The Muslims have nothing at 71. I had 800. <laughs> so anyway, um, I just wanted to let you know that this uh, link down below is good. It's long, but boy, I'll tell you, it is comprehensive. If you think Joseph Smith looked at a rock and saw anything, um, there's a lot of doubt there, and the, the two men that are there are very well knowledgeable and educated, and very knowledgeable about Mormon history. And uh, Grant Palmer has, I guess, a pretty good reputation for being uh, an anti-Mormon, because when he told the, the uh, people that Joseph Smith, uh, 20 years ago, um, translated out of a rock and a hat, they excommunicated him. <laughs> it's it's true, but they still knocked him out of the church. So anyway, take a look at down below. Don't worry about the bard. <laughs> this, you know, I get sympathy with this. When I'm walking around in Walmart <laughs> or, or, or Kmart, they go, let him through, let him through. I go, hey, let him go to the front of the line. <laughs> Here, take a hit, hit on this. And all the kids are coming up, they're getting a hit on the oxygen bottle. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I found a good article there. Uh, the lady that wrote and uh, imitated Ron, she's a bitch. And uh, she uh, has no right to be going on my, my tube and my messages. Uh, she's an idiot. And uh, there's a couple of other housekeeping things. People have asked me to help here or there. And I've told you, I would if I could. I would if I could, but there's some things. Uh, I did take a guy off the other day that was trying to make money off of my site. My site is 100% free. I've never made a dime. I never want a dime. I don't want your money. Truth is free. Truth is free. The Mormon Church wants you to pay 10% of your net in or your gross income uh, to them to get the truth. Uh, the truth is <laughs> their trick or treat and their trick they're not a treat. So anyway, pay me, lay me, and ail me. Oh God, hear the words of my mouth three times, a true order of prayer. The penalties don't cut my neck, don't cut my heart out, and don't cut out my stomach. And I want you to have health and enable, mirror on the bone, strength in the loins and the sinews, power in the priesthood. <laughs> Be upon me. You know, the Masonic uh, copy of that, Joseph Smith uh, copies, and it used to be power in the penis. Fan, fan work. <laughs> Make Anna. <laughs>
<laughs> what a little doll. What a little doll. So anyway, uh, take a look down below and uh, judge for yourself. If you think Joseph Smith uh, could read a rock, join the Mormon Church. Call the missionaries. Get in your white clothes and uh, go on over there. But anyway, this bar now is gone.